Hello everyone and welcome back to another library haul. Now, if you know me, you already know what I did. Did I have perfectly good library books at home that I haven't finished? Absolutely, they're sitting right here and they all look very interesting and I am getting to them. Did that stop me from going to the library and getting more books? In fact, a whole bag full of books that I didn't need because I had plenty at home. No, absolutely not. That did not stop me from doing that. So here we are with another haul with even more books that I will read. I promise. I promise. I have, I think, four weeks to read them before the library wants them back. So we're going to get through them. Uh, so let's dive in and talk about what I got at the library. The first one actually is one that I didn't get from the library. I know I just talked about how that's where this whole haul came from, but I was hanging out with friends on Monday evening and one of them recommended this book because we were talking about Stephen King and I do not read Stephen King because I know that he is going to be way too spooky for me. I scare very easily and I don't even want to entertain something that's going to give me nightmares for weeks, which is what it probably will. However, he gave me this copy, um, The Eyes of the Dragon. I know absolutely nothing about this book by Stephen King. Um, this says number one bestseller at the top. I don't know if that refers to just the author or if it refers to this book. Um, and it looks like something straight out of the 80s for sure. So he gave this one to me to try to see if I would like this one. Then I can say that I have read Stephen King, but I will not be reading, at least not anytime soon, any of his more popular series, even though I'm sure he is a great writer. Uh, he's just not for me. I don't think he's for me. I know that horror and anything that's too spooky is not for me. So we're gonna give this one a try. Apparently it's just a fantasy adventure. So we're gonna see how this goes. And this one I feel like I have a little bit less of a timeline. It is my friend, so I do need to read it and get it back to him, but I don't feel super pressured to get it in before I read the library books because I have to return the library books to the library or they'll get on my case about it. So yeah, that is Stephen King, The Eye of the Dragon. We're going to give it a read. I don't know what to expect, but he recommended it to me. Same friend who recommended Heaven's Design Team, and I really like the first three volumes of that. So I'm going to trust this recommendation too and see how I feel about it. Next up, um, now we're going to get into the actual library books. The first one is The Art of the Pen, Calligraphy from the Court of the Emperor Rudolf II. So this just looks like a fun little calligraphy book. Really where I went wrong in the library is I told myself I was going to go to the news section and just browse the new books and get a couple from there. But then I went down to the art section and I... I never stop in this section because I can get a bunch of like really small books that I'm like, oh, I could read this in an afternoon. But then I get like 30 of them, which I don't need. So I shouldn't have, I should have not gone to the art section, but here we are because I convinced myself, oh, it's short, I can read it, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, this is just a book on calligraphy. Not really sure what to expect, but it looks like it's full of really pretty pictures. So I am excited to read it. And that's basically the entire thought process behind this one. Again, the art of the pen, pretty short, but I am excited to give this one a read. Next up is Recollections in Black and White. This appears to be just like a sketch book with the artist's uh, memories or thoughts about what he sketched. Again, it's kind of thin, very long, uh, but I'm really, really interested in giving this one a read. I believe I said in the back that he began, he started out as a sign painter and it took him across New England and all sorts of places in the US. So then he began doing sketching along the way and he kind of, I guess, became someone who's famous. To be honest, I have not heard of him, but I'm not really art savvy. I did take a couple courses in college, but they can't cover everything in those introductory courses. So I've not heard of him, but I'm very interested in giving this one a read. What draw, what drew me to this book is the cover, to be honest, let's be honest, the cover, because it reminds me of just driving through the Midwest. Now I am from the Midwest of the United States and I feel like a lot of other people in the United States don't like the Midwest. They make fun of the Midwest. I feel like the Midwest is like your siblings. If you live there, you can make fun of it, but if you're not from the Midwest, then you can't make fun of the Midwest. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I actually love living in the Midwest. I think it's fabulous. I think it's really, really pretty. And this just reminds me of the feeling of driving through um, farmland and fields and seeing these barns and having the sky that's the sun that's blowing in the sky and sending the golden ray across it maybe early in the morning with some fog that's coming up it's just it's so pretty it's my favorite thing to do in life it makes me so happy so when I saw this I was like this just feels like driving from the Midwest I'm sure this is probably from New England or something but it just reminded me of it so I gravitated towards it and I pulled it off the shelf so yeah we're gonna give this one a read see how I feel about it I need a sip of tea Okay, next up, I was, 
So I found this one first and then I was on like a whole Midwest like theme. I was like, oh man, the Midwest is so cool. I love living here. Isn't this great? Um, so then I got this one, a sketchbook of Michigan. So just more sketches from Midwest. Um, I feel like it's same vibes. Uh, there's text sketching. This is by Reynold H. Uh, Widenar. I honestly do not know this individual. It looks like a slightly older book, but again, it's small, so I convinced myself I have plenty of time to read it, and I'm going to, yeah, give it a read and see how I feel about it. These two are kind of in the same category for me. They're just kind of sketchbooks that kind of remind me of the same experience, and yeah, I want to give them a read. The next one is a photography book, and I really enjoy photography books. I like just sitting in bed with them and flipping through the pages. I think they're super, super cool. So this one is there and back, photographs from the edge. And I believe this is like mountain or exploration photos. And they're from a variety of trips. And I believe the trips are at the front. I remember seeing a list. So yeah, inside the, the front flap, they have like uh, all the trips and the dates they took. Now, this is like an arm workout. These photography books are always like a free arm workout while you're at it, so. Uh, double duty I guess but yeah there's uh just photographs of them hanging out as well as their trips so I'm excited to read this I think it's going to be interesting I think it's going to scratch that like adventure itch plus get the photography that I really really like so I'm excited to read this one again that's there and back photographs from the edge by Jimmy Chin plus the cover is really pretty which is what drew me in next up is lakes their birth death their Birth, Life, and Death by John Richard Saylor. So this one has actually been on my wish list. I think that's what they call it on uh, Overdrive, which is like an app that my library has for audiobooks and eBooks and magazines. And I had it marked, but my library only has this in like the eBook version. And I want to, I prefer audiobooks. I don't mind eBooks, but I kind of do prefer to read a physical copy of a book if I'm gonna be reading it. I like audiobooks, but audiobooks are kind of different. I do a lot of listening to audiobooks when I'm like cleaning or taking a walk um, or even like running at the gym. So I can pair it with another activity. With an ebook, if I'm gonna be sitting and reading, I'd rather be reading a physical book. That's just my personal preference. Um, so yeah, I was kind of disappointed. That I was going to read the ebook because it seemed really, really interesting, but then I saw that this was in the new section of the library. So I am, yeah, excited to read this and learn all about it. Um, lakes are interesting. Lakes are pretty cool. Um, I feel like I just have a natural affinity for water. I feel like probably most humans have a natural affinity for water because we need it to survive. So it makes sense that our brains would really enjoy being around it. Um, and I've been to some super cool, I believe they're called kettle lakes, which are like these not very big, but they're super deep lakes that are, I think they're carved out made by glaciers. I don't know. We'll see if this book covers it, but it, there's been a couple of locations I've been to like that. And I would just love to learn more about how the lakes form, the different variety, instead of just looking at a lake and being like, yep, that's a lake. I'd like to be able to, you know, speak a little more intelligently about the topic, or at least understand what the little interpretive signs they have next to the lakes are talking about. So I anticipate this being a really good read, and I'm glad that I found it in the physical form, and I didn't have to read the audiobook, or not the audiobook, the ebook. But I'm sure the ebook is great if ebooks are your thing. Um, I didn't, just not my thing, or I just don't prefer them. Another cup of, another sip of tea. Before the final one, The Secret Lives of Numbers, Numerals and Their Peculiarities in Mathematics and Beyond by Alfred S. Posamentier. I am not quite sure how to say that last name, Posamentier. So this one is, I'm... I, I flipped through it and there's a ton of drawings, diagrams, equations. So I definitely feel like this is something that could get very overwhelming to someone who doesn't really enjoy math, but luckily I'm someone who does enjoy math. So I anticipate this being a very interesting read. What I think it's gonna be is just like a bunch of interesting facts about patterns that emerge or different things you can do with numbers. And I anticipate it being very, very interesting. But I think that maybe people who don't like math would find this very intimidating. As you can see, it is just filled with the kind of stuff that fills people who hate math with dread. So yeah, I'm excited to read this and I'm glad that I found this and I will let you know how I think about it. So let me organize these in a more range of a more organized fashion. Oh no, where did I put? Oh, here's Stephen King. These are all the books. 
that I have. I'm very excited to read them. And if any of them seem interesting, stay tuned. I will be reviewing them as well as the books that I haven't finished from the last haul. I still have them. They are on top of my little shelf over here and they are being read slowly but surely. I will be reviewing that. So anyways, other than that, let me know which of these seemed most interesting to you or if you have any other recommendations, I would love to hear it. I am going to try to not return to the library until I finish everything or almost everything I currently have out. So hopefully there will be no library halls in the near future just for my own sanity. But I will get through these and if these seem interesting, stay tuned because I will be reviewing them. Other than that, everyone, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.